Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lizzie Pierce and I co-run a video production company. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create four super easy, really versatile titles all in Premiere Pro. All you guys will need for these titles are the tools at your disposal, but for two of them, I would suggest picking up motion backgrounds. You can either head over to Storyblocks or to Video Hive if you want to pick those up. They're really inexpensive. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. First things first, this first title I'm going to show you guys will require a motion background. So I'll just play it through first so you can see what the title is. So it's a really cool ink blot and I actually have three different options. So in the first option, it completely wipes off the title. In the second one, it changes the color of the text. And in the third one, it actually reveals a second word in the title. Pretty cool, right? Bet you're wondering how I do it. Well, first things first, you have to get this motion background. So I picked up this one from Storyblocks and Storyblocks is subscription based. This video is not sponsored. So with Storyblocks, their basic plan is 10.99. That's Canadian a month because I'm here in Canada, but obviously it would be different in the US. Uh, but if you wanted to pick up a whole pack of these, you could go over to Video Hive and you can buy an entire pack of these ink blots that are 20 bucks and you're getting 16 of them. So that's also a great deal. Both really affordable. It's up to you which one you want to go with. So for this first title, as you can see, it looks like the ink is actually wiping off the black text. So in order to do that, just drag in your background, then you're going to write in your text. Let's just write ink blot. We'll center it. And now it looks like the ink is actually just wiping off the text on screen. So you could play that backwards and it would look like the ink is revealing your text. So this you could do with pretty much any black and white background as well. So in order to make this second title, which I'll play for you guys right here, you can see that that black text actually changes white when the ink blot covers it. So we'll take this ink blot title we made right here. All we're going to do is change the blend mode under the opacity tab to exclusion on your text. And then we're going to change the color of our text to white, play it through, and now that text changes to white. So you may recognize this title. I used something very similar in a recent video of mine. I did build my text in After Effects, but you don't have to if you don't have After Effects or if you don't know how to use it. Uh, this also just looks really cool by itself. Now for the third version of this title, we're combining the last two titles or the effects of the last two titles. So I'll play it through for you right now. As you can see, the ink blot is reversed and we're revealing the word titles. Basically what's happening here is the word cinematic has the exclusion blend mode and the word titles just has a normal blend mode, but it's filled with a black color. So let's build that with our title over here. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the text layer just to make sure that they line up perfectly. So now we've got the full word ink blot, but as you can see, they both still have the exclusion mode on. Just like in this cinematic titles, we can see that we want to leave exclusion blend mode on in the word ink. So we're gonna leave that the way it is, but in the word blot, we're going to change the blend mode to normal and we're actually going to fill it black. Then we're going to right click on our video background and we're going to reverse the speed. Now you can play it through and it looks like it's revealing the word blot. The only thing I'll change is I might add a little bit of a cross fade to the word ink just so it fades on. So there you have it, three variations of the same title. It's super easy and definitely looks a lot more expensive and complicated than it actually is. So title number two, we have a very cool reveal effect going on with a rectangle. And again, this one you can actually build completely on your own. All you need to do is steal an image of a rectangle off Google and those are free. First thing we're gonna do is drag in our rectangle right now. It doesn't move at all, but we're gonna change that. So we are actually going to build a mask. We're gonna go under the opacity tab, hit this Q 
cube icon and now we've created a mask. So now we're just going to make that mask a little bigger. Another thing to note is that this title is actually going to look better in a 60 frames per second timeline, so just keep that in mind. Now we have our mask, and the first thing we're going to do is take this side of the mask and bring it all the way over to the left and make a keyframe there. Then we're going to move to right there. For now, we can always move these keyframes later for the sake of timing. I'm gonna find our mask again, and we're going to grab this side and we'll pull it all the way over to the right to reveal the full cube. We'll move over a few frames again, select the left side of our mask, and pull it all the way over to the right. So as we play that through, you can see that the rectangle appears from the left and then disappears to the right, and that's exactly what we want. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our text. Now that we have our text, you're going to want to find the part in your rectangle where the rectangle is fully visible, and that's where you're going to insert your text. So that's where it will begin. And then as that rectangle wipes out, it'll appear like it's revealing your text. Now, as you can see in the title we made before, we have this rectangle revealing from the opposite direction. So again, that's the same principle. All you're going to do is bring in your rectangle once more. We'll make another mask. I always just extend the mask fully so I can see the object underneath first. And now you're going to take top two corners of your mask, bring them all the way down to the bottom, make a keyframe, move over a few frames, pick up your mask again, open it up so you can reveal the entire square. That'll make another keyframe as well, automatically now. Move over a few frames, and then you'll take the bottom two corners of your mask and bring them all the way up to the top. So same thing, we're going to look for that portion of the rectangle where it's fully visible. That's where we're going to put our text, and we can actually change this to the word text. The other thing you'll notice is you just wanna make sure when you start layering these that you don't have your two text layers overlapping. So all I'm going to do is end my first text layer when my other one begins, and you'll have a seamless effect. And you can be much more precise with the mask than I was in this and play with the feathering of the edges. I'm just showing you guys this really quickly so you have the principles to be able to build this yourselves. Title number three. This one is super easy. Again, I picked up these backdrops from Video Hive and I got a huge pack of them. Some of them were smaller like this one and some of them were big backgrounds that covered the entire screen. I'm pretty sure it was about 20 bucks, but don't quote me on that, but it was still really inexpensive. First, I'll play it through. Super easy, super simple. Again, looks a lot more expensive and complicated than it actually is. So all you're going to do is drag in your video file right here, and it's quite big right now. So let's just bring it down to 40% of its original size. You do wanna make sure that you're getting backgrounds at the largest size possible so that if you wanna scale them down or you wanna scale them up, you have the option to. Next thing you're gonna do is add your text. That's about the size I want. Now we're going to change it to black. And here's the fun part. So what you're going to do is go into your effects panel. You can look up paint. And I like using the paint splatter wipe effect, or technically it's a transition. You're going to pull that on the beginning of your clip and I shorten the length of time to make it a little bit faster. So now as you can see, it looks like the word paint is being actually painted on along with the background. So now all we have to do to allow it to animate off is we'll take this background layer, duplicate it, right click, go to speed duration, hit reverse speed, and now it paints off. And you're going to just extend your text layer, grab that paint splatter effect or transition, make it play a little bit faster. And there you go. And it paints off. And if you are using black text, 
text on a black background. I know what you're probably thinking, what's the point of using the paint splatter transition on and off? Well, you aren't always using a black background. You could have a different video playing underneath, in which case this paint splatter transition is very visible. And again, this is a transition in Premiere, super easy, but really cool looking and applies to a lot of different types of videos. I've been using this in a few videos of mine as well, and I love it because it's super simple and looks really cool. Our last title, and arguably the simplest one, you don't need any motion backgrounds for this. This is completely up to you, completely built in Premiere Pro. I'll play it through to show you guys. And this one is great just for any regular title, but I would suggest using this for your lower thirds or anytime you want an icon or a logo to zoom into the screen. And later on, I'll show you actually how to add sound effects for this as well, because adding sound effects, and you can do this for any of the titles we mentioned earlier, it really just levels up the production quality of that title, makes it seem more expensive, more professional, and a lot more complicated. It can almost trick your eye into seeing the effect work even better. So seeing this zoom appear even more smoothly. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write out some text. It would probably be good if we made it white so we can actually see it on this black background. There we go, zoom. Now let's center this. Now we're going to add some keyframes. So if this is where we want it to land, let's add our first keyframe here for position. We'll go back to the beginning of the clip and we're just going to drag it off screen to the right. Now it appears on screen a little too slowly. So what we're going to do is speed up that zoom from the right by moving our keyframe closer to the first one. Now it's happening a lot faster. Now even faster. That's perfect. But as you can see, it doesn't have this nice motion blur. So that's what we're going to add right now. So we're gonna go into our effects panel. We're going to search blur and we're going to select directional blur and drag that on top of our clip. Then the direction is 90 degrees because it's coming from the right over here. And we're going to go to the beginning of the clip. So we're going to put our blur length at 190. So as you can see, it has that blur on it now, but we don't want that blur, that directional blur to stay on when it reaches the middle of the screen. We want that to go away. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the clip, add a keyframe, head over to the keyframe we set where the text is actually lined up in the center of the screen. And we're going to change that blur length to zero. We'll play it from the beginning. And there it is. I like to add a bit of an ease out on the first keyframe and an ease in on the second keyframe just to make it a little bit smoother. So I picked up this sound effect from a pack that I have. I'll link it in the description below, but you can get a lot of great free sounds from freesound.org and all I would use is a simple whoosh, a whoosh, a whoosh whoosh. And now you've got a super easy title. And if you just change the position of this, I nested it and actually pulled it down to the lower right side of my frame. And now it's a great lower third. All right, so that was four super easy, versatile titles that you can build all within Premiere Pro. If you're looking for any of the assets I mentioned in this video, they'll all be linked in the description below. What I want to leave you guys with today is don't underestimate what you can do all within Premiere, all within one program because a lot of times it's something simple, but simple isn't stupid. It can be really, really effective. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos. And I'll see you in the next one.